What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Inkscape new version video for you. So I am super excited to announce that yesterday Inkscape rolled out their new newest version, version 2.9. And with version 2.9 came a lot of great features that we've been waiting for for a while. So I thought I'd make a quick video kind of walking you through those. And then later on I could make some more detailed videos talking through exactly how all of these work and how they can incorporate in your workflow. So so um, you can get more information about this by visiting the blog post that I've linked in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in the newest Inkscape version, they've added a bunch of new features. They're all listed in this blog post, which again, I will link to in the notes down below. But the first feature I wanted to talk about is the ability to create a custom asset library. So the custom asset library function is a function that I think that everyone's wanted for a while. What it allows you to do is not only access the Inkscape assets, you can also import your own models into Inkscape. And so the way that this works is when you open up the new version of Inkscape, when you go into your asset library right here, you're going to notice that there's a new tab um, labeled custom assets. So you have your regular asset library, which by the way has been improved even more. There's now over 2,000 models in this library. So I'm really impressed by what they're bringing in um, every time they release a new version. But specifically, we want to look at this tab right here, which is custom assets. All right, so what that's going to do is that's going to pop up a window that looks like this. And you can click on the button right here in order to open up the asset editor. And we're going to switch to the custom asset editor. We're just going to add an asset. In this case, we're going to call it wood chair. And what this allows us to do is this allows us to import any of those formats that were listed on that blog post. So in this case, we're going to go get an asset by importing geometry. So I'm going to go bring in a mega scans asset that I've downloaded. So I'm just going to bring in this wood chair model and notice how these are all OBJ files. So I'm going to bring in maybe the level of detail two. So I'm just going to double click on this to bring it in. So notice how what that does is that brings in the geometry for your chair. Well now what you need to do is you need to bring in all of the textures, right? So we're basically setting this up so that it'll work in a rendering engine. So in this situation, I would click on texture and I would go add the albedo map because that is where the images or the, the model image is stored. So you can see how now we've loaded in our albedo map. You can also load in your other maps. So for example, for your height map, you can load in either a bump map or a displacement map. So displacement is a feature they've just added, which we'll talk about in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in. Notice how you can adjust the amount of displacement that's happening in this model. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna set this up so that it's pre-set up inside of Inkscape. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna load in our roughness map. So I'm gonna click the plus right here. And in this case, it's gonna be a gloss map and we're just gonna invert it. So I'm just going to flip this. And so what we've got is we've got this object that's set up that's about ready to go. But one thing you might have noticed about this is that the scaling is too big, right? Like right now, this is gonna come in at like 30 meters, 40 meters, 30 meters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this in maybe at more like one meter. And one thing that I wish this did is I wish this had like a zoom extends function, but basically you navigate around this like you do um, the actual Inkscape window itself. So you can bring this around. Um, you can actually adjust just like this. And basically what we wanna do is we wanna set this up so that we have a thumbnail view of this object because we can't save this. Notice how we can't do anything with this or we can't generate it until we generate a thumbnail. So we're gonna click on the thumbnail right here. That's the image that's gonna show up inside of your library. So then we can click on generate asset. Notice how it tells us we need to save the project. So we just need to save it in the folder where we're storing our Inkscape assets. So in this case, right, I'm just gonna save this as wood chair, or I might save it as wood. Yeah, we'll go with chair. So we're gonna go ahead and save this. We'll click on the button for generate asset. And then this image will show up in your image library. So now, we can close out of this, go back to our image library, and notice how this wood chair that we set up now shows up. And so we can bring that into our SketchUp model just by clicking. And I'll do a zoom extends. The cool thing about this is this brings this in as one of those Inkscape proxy models. So the Inkscape proxy models are really lightweight. And then, and I've got this still a little bit big, so we'll just bring it down 
something like this. We'll go ahead, we'll put a plane under it. But now, if I was to render this out in Inkscape, it's gonna load in all of that geometry and all of those textures inside of the rendering engine itself. So you're gonna get a really great result without hurting your SketchUp model's performance, which is a really cool feature. And it's a little blurry because I have depth of field set up from my last project that I worked on. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn depth of field off. Now, if we go back, we look at it. Notice how this chair model comes in completely set up and it looks really great by the way. Um, when you couple something like Megascans who's doing really great work with their models with Inkscape, notice how you can actually, this model comes in, it gives you a really fantastic result. So being able to save these custom models in your library is gonna be a huge time saver for you moving forward. So in addition, they've also added the ability to add video textures. So video textures is gonna allow you to load up video files on planes inside of your model. And so the way this would work is you would just adjust or you would apply a color. So something like this, right? This color A01. Well then within your uh, materials manager, what you do is you just load in a video file in the albedo slot. So let's say I was to load in the video file that I used yesterday um, in my rendering video. And then we were to go into Inkscape, we'll notice how that video file is playing right here. And so it's a little bit big, so you would need to mess around with the sizing of that material. So notice how what this does is this actually tiles this in here inside of SketchUp. So I think what you could do is you could just position this texture and just resize it. So maybe something more like this. And then if you were to run that inside of Inkscape in the rendering engine itself, notice how that's gonna play your video. So when I click and hold and move around in here, that video is actually playing on that surface. So in addition, I believe this is emissive as well, meaning it'll emit light, so it'll light things in here. So the ability to add in video is a really cool feature. I'm excited to kind of play around with that a little bit as well. So in addition, and this is a feature I'm really excited about, they've added the ability to use displacement maps. So we've had the ability to use um, normal maps and bump maps before to make things look bumpy, but nothing that actually displace the materials to give them depth. So let's say, for example, that we were to, instead of, we, instead of using this, so let's say that we were to bring in a brick material like this one. So I'm gonna go ahead, we'll explode this, I'll sample it, and I'll apply it to this face. Whoops, that should not be projected. Okay, perfect. So let's say we've got this material, maybe make it a little bit smaller, so maybe like six feet, something like that. So let's say that we added this brick material in here. Well, previously what we had the ability to do was we had the ability to load in those bump maps, right? So this used to say, I think it might have said normal slash bump. I'm not 100% sure. But now, let's say instead of bringing in a bump map, we were to bring in this displacement file. So the displacement file is going to be a displacement map. Well, now in your dropdown, there's the option to select displacement map. So if we have a displacement map in here, and let's see if I can get this to pin so that you can actually see it. So if I click on the play button right here, there we go. So if you look at this now from the side, notice what you're getting is you're getting actual displacement from that map. So like for example, if this was brought in as a bump map, notice how you just get a little bit of bumpiness, but everything stays like super flat, right? Well, if you switch this to displacement and you bring this value up, notice how this is actually displacing the geometry in 3D. So because it's displacing the geometry in 3D, what you're getting, and it's really kind of a simulated effect, like I don't think it's actually moving the geometry in and out, because notice how if you look at it from the side, the edges are still flat. But if you look at this from the front, you're getting a much more pronounced effect using that map. So I am super, super excited about that because that's gonna allow us to create some really cool effects inside of Inkscape. So make sure that you log in and check that one out. So in addition, they've also added new fitness assets in here, which if you're not using the fitness assets 
I still like this because it really gives an indicator that Enscape is targeting the professional design market. So what these are is these are resources. They now have them for healthcare professionals. They now have them for fitness. And so that really gives me the idea that they're looking at um, what their user base is using and trying to target that and give them what they want, which I think is a really cool thing because that means in the future they're going to be really tuned in to actual professionals' needs with their new features. Um, they also have some other additional assets that are in here as well. They've also added Vectorworks support. So if you model in Vectorworks, you can now use Enscape. So that's really cool as well, um, bringing in all those new users from um, Vectorworks. And then they've also got a couple other features, which I haven't really looked into. I'm super excited about the offline asset library because if you have a really slow internet connection like I do, it can be really painful to keep re-downloading things over and over again. So if you can download them and store them locally, that means that you can have them whether you're connected to the internet or not. Not. I also like that they've given you the ability to kind of toggle this because um, what that means is that means that your installer files when you get the new version stay small um, because a lot of the time the reason those are so big is because they've got all those assets loaded in there. So they've also added the ability to localize your uh, standalones, meaning that your clients can see them in the language of their operating system, which is really cool um, geographically speaking, as well as a rest mode disable feature. So in the future, the one thing I would love to see from Enscape, and I'm sure that they're looking at something like this, I would really love to see um, a material library function. So a material library function would really be a game changer as well because you're not resetting up materials over and over and over again. Um, I haven't found that to be a huge issue, but it would definitely be a time saver. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Are you interested in this new version? Do you like the features? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. Remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.